So I recently released an AI generated film trailer, which utilized among other things, Google's VO 3.1, Sora 2 and more. Reactions did seem very positive, so I thank you for that, you know, despite the bonehead name. So as promised today, we're going to take a full production breakdown, including all of the tools used. Plus, we'll go over all of the associated costs and time. So, you know, you'll have a good idea of how much something like this might cost you. All right, dim the lights and let's go to the movies. So first off, if you did not catch the Planet Hell trailer, and yes, I, again, I realize that's a stupid name, but it's so stupid it actually works. Don't worry, we'll actually be running it for review in just a moment. If you did see it, well, this version actually does differ slightly, and it actually might be kind of interesting for you to check out. Basically, if you caught the original version, which is linked down below, that was running at 24 frames per second. This time around in an alternate version, uh, I'm gonna be running it at 30 frames a second via Topaz Video. It kind of has an interesting smoothing effect. Let's check it out. You have been found guilty for crimes against the Imperium. Your sentence begins now. You know this is a setup. I'm loyal to the Empire. You will be issued your weapon and armor, and may your soul serve the Empire in the afterlife. Weapons? You have no idea where they're sending us. It's hell. Maggots, welcome to HLEL, the most unique prison in the Empire. There are no walls here. There are no cells here. There is no need, because everything on this planet is going to kill you. no hope here. There is religion, but it is tainted. Choose it at your peril. There is order here, and it is absolute. My prison is not a cruel one. Make no mistake, you will die here, but I offer you one piece of comfort. Every day you will venture out and commit violence on this world. You are the worst of the Empire the lowest, most heinous of individuals. And you serve no purpose but one, to tame this world for the Emperor. Are there any questions? I have a question. If I kill everything on this planet, do I go free? So yeah, that's a piece that definitely wears its influence on its sleeve. Overall, I am pretty happy with the way it turned out. You know, there's always stuff that you want to go back and fix and work on. But in this case, I did put myself on a self-imposed deadline for release, which in my opinion is really the only way anything actually gets done. So I would say rough estimate on like total time spent here was about 10 hours over three days. Initially, I began by simultaneously visually concepting the idea via mid journey. And as these results came in, it would sort of help shape the narrative. Uh, as we can see here, I, I definitely generated a lot of images. Now, one interesting little trick that that I like to use in image generators, be it mid journey or any other, is uh, to generate an aspect ratio of two one. Despite the fact that our final piece is in 16.9, I do feel that like when you generate in 2.1 in any image generator, uh, the framing is just going to end up a little more cinematic. Now, concurrent to generating images, I, of course, am generating video as well. You know, if there's one like major takeaway from all of this, it's to think of it like you're preparing a meal in a kitchen. You know, while one thing is on a skillet, make sure that you are prepping something else while yet another thing is in the oven. There are a lot of moving parts, but at the same time, I I do feel that it's, it's pretty easy to slip into a creative flow state when, you know, so much is going on around you. Now, in terms of primary video generation, I, I knew that I wanted to lean heavier on dialogue, kind of turning it into a mini scene, as opposed to the current modern trailer style of taking like snippets of scenes with, you know, various sound ups and then kind of cobbling them together to, well, I mean, oftentimes make a trailer that, that doesn't look like the movie at all. Additionally, considering that I was leaning so heavily on image referencing, well, I mean, that kind of ended up making VO 3.1, you know, the default leader as 
currently, you still cannot generate realistic looking characters on Sora 2. The added bonus of using VO 3.1, at least on flow with the Ultra Plan, is that, you, well, you can abuse the unlimited free fast generation. I do have to say, now that I've spent a pretty considerable amount of time on the flow platform, it has definitely improved with a number of quality of life features, uh, including the fact that you can now just drag images in uh, and then have that set as photo reference. As I mentioned earlier, since I was generating my images in 2.1, uh, that does give us a little bit of play in terms of reframing our image now that we're cropping it down to 16.9. Um, so yeah, kind of handy. Additionally, the ingredients feature, which I, it does work really great. Surprisingly, I did not end up utilizing it that much on this, uh, but it now does allow you to uh, upload and like 9 by 16 images along with 16 by 9 images, which is great for like full body character references. Additionally, since Nano Banana is now built in, we can do something like, you know, show the backside of this character. So we now have front and back views of this character, which may come in very handy for other ingredients shots. Now, in terms of consistent character voices, I mean, it's not 100%, but it's definitely getting there. And while I, I can't say positively, but I do have the feeling that VO is kind of casting voices based off of image inputs, or at least what it thinks the character should sound like. Uh, and that can be augmented with some text direction. For example, running our wrongly convicted prisoner who is definitely going on a bug squashing rampage. Um, again, no direction in terms of his vocal performance. We end up with this. I have a question. If I kill everything on this planet, do I go free? Now, I kind of hear that as like generic American accent, but at the same time, I mean, I, the voice was consistent. I have a question. If I kill everything on this planet, do I go free? And again, you can drive the voice via text prompt, taking that exact same prompt and just adding in, uh, says with a UK accent. I have a question. If I kill everything on this planet, do I go free? Now, I will say that when it comes to extensions, things can get a bit wonky. Uh, for example, here, the line, there are no cells here is the original voice, and then it switches over to the extension voice. And well, I mean, you'll hear it. There are no cells here. There is no need because everything on this planet is going to kill you. But I'll say with a few re-rolls, you'll generally land on the same voice. I'd say about like, you know, 50% of the time. I will say with the exception of our judge character who pretty much maintained the exact same voice throughout. This is the voice of a professional AI actor. All the rest of them are just amateurs compared to me. But even if we did get wonky results from our AI judge, again, we did not because he studied at the Royal School of AI Actors, um, it's not that big a deal because we can just sort of spam away on the rerolls considering that VO Fast runs zero credits. So, you know, spam away. Now, I will say that one thing that VO does not do very well is heavy action scenes with a lot of camera movement. I mean, it, it tries, but it also kind of feels a little bit flat. Meanwhile, Sora 2 is pretty good at creating dynamic movement. Well, frankly, just a lot of chaos. Uh, and again, while this does look very choppy, I think that if you were to run this prompt a few times, you would get enough that you could kind of cobble together a, a pretty frenetic uh, action sequence. That said, you well, you still can't image reference on Sora. So uh, oddly, actually, the solution here is Mid Journey. And while I'll say Mid Journey video, I mean, it can get kind of wonky. It's also capable of doing some really cool like handheld dynamic dynamic stuff like this, which um, again, I do think looks really good and you can't pull this off in VO. Uh, as a quick side note on the alternative side, uh, I think that you could also probably use WAN and kind of get similar results here. But that is not to say that Sora was not used here. Uh, it's just not the version of Sora that you might have been expecting. Yeah, Sora 1, you know, the one that got way overhyped and then when it was released, it was like complete jank. Well, it always had one big hidden superpower that I knew would come in handy one day. Uh, and that is its video to video features. To demonstrate, we're going to take a quick rocket off of Planet Hell and uh, head over to the Caribbean. So this is a VO 3.1 output that we showcased on the channel a few videos ago. This is a first frame, last frame, plus an extension. Um, overall, I mean, looks pretty decent. So taking this and bringing it over to Sora 1, if we run this under a custom remix strength of, uh, I've actually found four to be pretty good, uh, which is somewhere in between mild and subtle, um, the results end up coming out like this, which 
Uh, admittedly, still looks a little bit kind of on the janky and weird side, almost like, again, that ultra sharp look that Sora had. Um, but it also does some really nice stuff with texturing. Um, so the trick to sort of tame this part down is now we take our Sora output over to Topaz Astra, the creative video upscaler. Uh, and here, I mean, this is actually a place where you can actually use creative bold uh, on it. And uh, the results really ends up knocking out that Sora 1 instability while, you know, simultaneously keeping our initial VO output yet at the same time adding in a lot of that texture and fine nuance that we did get in the Sora bump. Um, yeah, this ended up being a pretty cool technique. You can definitely see the whole process in action here. So this is our original VO3 output and then, you know, running it through Sora and then finally through Topaz. We end up with this as our final shot, which I mean, looks pretty impressive. Uh, definitely a lot more texture and nuance in the shot now. Now, is that a lot of steps? Yes, it definitely is a lot of steps. But like I was saying earlier with the cooking analogy, I mean, once you kind of get into the flow and rhythm of it, it, it really isn't so bad. Um, your downloads folder ends up a giant mess. But, you know, if you've done any kind of AI video project, I mean, you're used to that already. Rounding out on the post-production side, uh, this is the timeline for the project. Um, you feel free to throw stones at it. I'm never going to win that like Pinterest uh, aesthetic timeline of the year award. Um, I, my timelines are messy. That's that said, if you are planning to jump into all of this stuff and take things up to the next level, I, I really do have to recommend jumping up to a professional nonlinear editor. I do use Premiere Pro. Uh, there's also DaVinci Resolve. If I were getting started today, uh, I would definitely look into DaVinci Resolve, uh, mostly because, well, I mean, you can get started with it totally for free. Um, and by started with it, I mean, you can, you can pretty much do an entire project with the free version. I'll say that there is definitely a bit of a learning curve when it comes to DaVinci, but uh, there's also like 20,000 YouTube tutorials on it. So, I mean, honestly, you'll learn it in about a weekend. Free DaVinci commercial aside, yeah, you're welcome for that one, Blackmagic. Heading back over to the Premiere side again, because that's what I use. Anything that I talk about here is uh, conceptually going to be the same in any video editor, minus one thing. So taking a look at the timeline here, uh, track four generally is going to be our Topaz outputs. Below them, uh, I was stacking in the original VO3 outputs, so just kind of using them as guideposts. Um, anything below here um, that are that's green and muted, that's all of our audio tracks. And then you'll note above uh, here, we have two adjustment layers. So in case you're not aware, adjustment layers, all they are, they're just it's just a blank layer. That's all there is. Um, so I've added a new one here on track seven. Um, again, there's nothing in here, but what I can do is bring in like uh, this monochrome effect here, pop it on top. And because that's on top of all of our other layers, obviously, uh, you know, our footage turns black and white. Where this comes in handy is that we can also adjust the overall level of that adjustment layer. So as you can see, the black and white um, monochrome look rather is, is kind of, you know, moving up and down as I move the level up and down. Um, so adjustment layers in a nutshell. So for the most part, there were two adjustment layer effects that I was kind of leaning on here. Uh, the first being Dehancer. This is a plugin that I've been meaning to play with for a while that gives everything kind of an emulated film look. And as I was mentioning earlier, because it is a pro level plugin, um, you know, the platforms that it's available on are things like DaVinci, Final Cut, and Premiere. There are definitely a lot of options in here, a lot, you know, regarding color that you can sort of play around with. But I think the look that ends up kind of standing out the most is when you start coming down to the options for like film grain, the haliation, bloom, um, and things like film breath. Um, yeah, if you can see it here, yeah, yeah, you can totally, I guess you can definitely see that, um, the amount of difference that it makes there. I'll run the video this segment here, both with it on and off so that you can kind of see exactly how much of a difference it, it tends to make. The other trick that I utilized here was just adding in like a slight like Gaussian focus blur around the corners here. Um, you can see it here it is on and here it is off. Um, I, I do think that this sort of stuff really helps again hide imperfections. Moving on to cost which is something that you know obviously everyone has a very vested interest in. Uh, we're going to do this a couple of different ways namely because uh, I think that there are options here. Uh, one place that I don't think is 
necessarily optional is VO3. And for better or worse, it is unfortunately the AI Ultra plan, uh, which uh, it does run $249 a month, but they still have this intro offer of $124 for three months. Um, so I would recommend jumping on that. We namely want to be on the Ultra plan. So again, we can abuse the uh, zero credit fast generations. We're moving over to Sora, which I'm actually going to put under the optional category. Um, mainly since we're using Sora 1 here, you don't necessarily have to go this route. And um, I do think even though I do have the stupid $200 plan, I think you might be able to get away with the $20 like standard version with Sora 1, which only will output at 720, but that's really all you need um, considering that we're taking it over to our next place, which is Topaz. So Topaz recently restructured their whole pricing approach uh, and is now subscription based. But uh, so for $37, you essentially get access to uh, the full suite of Topaz tools. Uh, that includes uh, vi Topaz Video and um, Astra and Bloom, their image upscaler and their video upscaler, the creative versions um, that you can use, like that are cloud-based. So uh, we'll add that one in there. Um, then we move over to Midjourney. You could definitely use any other image generator that you want. I would say to find something that's packaged in with WAN at least, so that way you get that benefit of being able to generate sort of faster and more dynamic video, um, something that VO3 doesn't do well so that you know you can sort of balance between the two. Rounding out, we also have Dehancer at $59 a month. And this one is of course totally optional, but I, I really do find that it adds a nice uh, like analog texture and quality that you know, it, it helps your video stand out just a little bit more. And although I, I did forget to go over it here, I would also add in Suno at $10 a month for music generation. So with some ballpark figures, we're essentially looking at anywhere between $261 a month to $406 a month, which look, I know that's a lot of money. But as I always say, it is still far less than a traditional production would run you but things definitely start to get interesting when you extrapolate all of that out to say like a feature length. So going back to our time breakdown, again, uh, presuming it took me around, you know, 10 hours to make two minutes worth of footage. But if we were to extrapolate that time out to 90 minutes, it would essentially roughly run about 450 hours to make, you know, a hour and a half long feature film. Um, and then, you know, standard five day work week around eight hours a day uh, that would basically be about 12 weeks until you had a feature film which oddly enough is around the same amount of time that it would take to shoot a feature film but that's just with one person working if you were to buddy up with someone uh, and you have two people it could probably done in about half that time three or four forming a small studio I mean, you get something done pretty quickly as long as the organization up front is pretty on point when you really start looking at it that way, I mean, that is really not that expensive. I mean, I remember shooting student films on 16 millimeter film that cost more than that. Now, will your feature length AI generated films be better than like the student films that I worked on? I mean, to be honest, yeah, probably yes, those things were terrible. But again, my point is that when we see subscription costs of 460, like $606 a month, it, it definitely sounds like a lot. Again, until you start thinking about it from a project standpoint, just make sure that you know what you're after and what you're trying to accomplish, you know, on that first day of the month and get in and get out as quickly as possible. Now, will I be making the full feature length version of Planet Hell? I mean, probably not. I, I gotta get back to the news. Uh, speaking of which, I am gonna go make a run, see what has been going on this week, and uh, we'll be back tomorrow for a full roundup. As always, I thank you for watching. My name is Tim.